Ed, I'll start with you. Can Verline put together a more consistent run and be a championship contender this season? Absolutely. I think 100%. Uh, I think Pascal Verline has always been an incredibly talented driver. We saw it in uh, DTM in German touring cars where uh, he basically became world champion and that was, well, not world champion because DTM was not a world championship, but it's still a very, very tough championship to win. And he was able to do that and that got that promotion, got that sort of a promotion with, with the Mercedes backing to get into Formula One with Manor and then Sauber, where unfortunately things sort of fell apart. He got this reputation of being somewhat difficult to work with, which I think was really unfair. It's based on basically one kind of bad test he had with Force India where a lot of the Force India engineers and mechanics would basically badmouth Fairline over the radio. Uh, and we heard it a few times at races like Bahrain in uh, 2017 and stuff like that, where they would just, they would just be getting these horrible messages that were basically implying that Verline was really incompetent. And uh, he was he, so he was under a lot of pressure in sort of uh, that period of his Formula 1 career and ended up not getting a seat and ended up, you know, finding his feet with Mahindra and now joining Porsche, where he's basically a asserted himself very much as uh, one of the lead drivers uh, with the Costa having being at the qual qualifying a bit further back and having a tougher job to make it through the uh, through the field but on Mexico where he's won before track the play to his strengths he was able to finish runner up and not couldn't quite keep up with Jake Dennis of course with the same powertrain underneath him but uh uh, I'm thinking back to last season, there were great races like Monaco where Verline was leading and then had a, basically a powertrain uh, issue, which uh, meant he had to retire just as he went into attack mode, if I remember correctly. The car completely shut down on him. And I remember watching an interview that Jack Pickering did when post-race and he was so disappointed because that's the sort of thing where you completely lose your momentum and the title sort of uh, slips away from you. And Amber there saying, I uh, hope he has a good season. Yeah, me too. I think Pascal's a really likable friendly guy always uh very open when you talk to him and uh uh i, I think uh i think for uh, the championship and also for paul should be really great to um have someone have one that have a uh, pascal verline be running up the front because uh, he's shown so much potential and for sometimes he's made mistakes yes but usually he's shown brilliant pace and occasionally these the car has had a technical issue that's held him back or he's been bumped into by somebody so i think uh, if he can uh, if he can stay on the straight and narrow, avoid some of those issues, then I think Pascal could well be in the title hunt when we get to London at the end of the season. Yeah, and I mean, I, I completely agree with you, Ed, because the persistence we saw yesterday from Verline as well uh, proved that he has got it in him to be a championship contender. And I think first in Mexico last year, second in Mexico this year as well, but this time at a very crucial part of the season because it's going into uh, the rest of the year rather than uh round three last year this is going to be a very key thing can he stay consistent i really hope so we did see as you said a couple of things last year that lost consistency with him but uh i'm thinking I th he with that porsche difficult season as i said earlier in terms of getting it but he can still remain consistent get the points and be in contention by the time we get back to some fast open wheel tracks later on in the year portland which isn't a street circuit could be ideal for them uh later on to score some great points as well because yes it's going to get modified a little bit but uh from joe and ben have been there as well joe's practically there every other weekend yeah he knows as well as anybody the fact is that you, it's a racetrack pure uh blood so this is going to be great to see what they can do. And if they can use the first chicane, which I think they are going to, the rest of the track's pretty much a power circuit. So this could be good for them to get some decent points. Yeah, well, I've always taken a liking to Pascal Verline. He was actually my pick after Nico Rosberg retired because of where he was as a Mercedes junior in Formula One to maybe get that Mercedes seat. Of course, that ultimately ended up going to Valtteri Bottas and after spending a year at Manor, he went to Sauber, and who knows uh, what his career could have looked like in Formula One. Uh, but I'm glad he's got these opportunities now in uh, Formula E to reinvent himself, and uh, I, I agree with you guys. I hope he has a great season, and looks like he's uh, certainly off to a good start here, so we'll see where it goes from there.